Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from the Wildcat Welcome Board of Directors. And I'm Liliana, I'm an RA on campus. And on today's episode of Decoding NU, we're going to be talking all about RAs, res life, and everything that comes with that. Um, there are three parts to this. So we have our RAs, our resident assistants, residential life, and residential services. So Liliana, can you decode exactly what an RA is? Yeah, uh, for sure. So RAs, uh, you're probably familiar with the concept, but uh, actually, let me step back. There's typically a two-year on-campus residency requirement, um, and on your floor, you're going to have one, two, three, depending on the size of your floor, RAs, um, and we are resident assistants by title. So we are current students, just like you are, and um, our primary role is to create like safe and inclusive environments um, that are also fun to live in um, and foster student success by making sure that you feel comfortable socially, academically, and personally as you're transitioning into your first year in college. Um, so RAs have this like bad reputation uh, that um, <laughs> I know lots of RAs like to convince people that, you know, we're not the police, we're not bad guys, like RAs really just want to be your friends. Um, and as cliche as it sounds, it's very true. Um, and what I really see RA's primary role as is uh, connecting with residents and speaking from firsthand experience to help you adjust as comfortably as possible. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a very like full and all encompassing um, understanding of what an RA does. So I really appreciate that. Now, I'm curious if you could kind of delve into the concept of residential life. Um, maybe what the, the main differences are between residential services and residential life. Yeah, um, that's a great question. It's a question that I didn't know the answer to until <laughs> maybe two months into my work as an RA. Uh, so residential services oversees residential life and residential services um, has multiple teams within it. Um, and RAs are housed within residential life. So residential services is who you go to when it comes to housing assignments, um, the more technical administrative side of things, not to say that residential life doesn't deal with some of that as well, but residential life is more concerned with your day-to-day -day experience and the programs that you have, uh, like the programming um, and community building, both in your building and across areas. Um, and across campus for that matter. Amazing. So it seems like RAs have a ton of roles, um, but something that's really important to remember is that they're really mainly there to support you. Um, so whether you're feeling homesick or just unsure of how to approach something on campus, um, they're really a great resource for students. And honestly, they're usually just a few doors down the hall. So very convenient and always there to provide support. Absolutely. Well said. And um, as an RA, it's it's my job to help build community in the residence hall. And this can take so many different forms. And my personal favorite is to decorate my hallway um, with a different theme every time. Uh, and I like to go all out decking it out with streamers and little like cutouts and making sure that the door decks feel cute and personal. Um, but besides that, fostering community takes the form of just chilling in the lounge like you walk by and you see me studying there um and that's an invitation to come sit down and distract me please uh begging you to distract me um and then more formal programming as well and that runs the gamut of you know informal fun stuff like in covid you know there's hybrid events um unfortunately with the mask mandate that's been reinstated it looks like we're gonna have to revert back to some hybrid programming. And I did uh, events like baking cookies and leaving them in the kitchen. So you could grab a cookie and then go back to your computer to play Pictionary with the rest of us. Um, and then there are other uh, events that are like, you know, more large scale that involve the whole building. So Elder has a very popular event uh, weekly on Sundays called Cider, Sunday Cider, uh, where we have tons of donuts and hot apple cider. Uh, the name says it all. Uh, there's also the Kinkin Cafe, which does something similar in terms of serving pastries and, and hot beverages, uh, which is really nice in the summer and every, uh, sorry, summer, winter, uh, and everybody looks forward to it. Um, and then there are also more small scale events like my RD last year put on uh, Play-Doh making with essential oils, which is 
creative. Um, and food coloring was stuck in my hands for weeks, but it was <laughs> worth it. I had nice smelling Play-Doh. <laughs> That's amazing. I know, um, thinking back to my experiences on campus, living on campus, um, I lived in a residential college, so I was really lucky that there were already a lot of, um, like, historical events built into the history of the residential college, um, but a lot of that came from the RAs just making it possible um, and making those things happen. I know one of my RAs, um, had a nice big room and like made sure to have a lot of seating in his room so that um, if a resident wanted to come in and just talk or hang out or had an issue and you know needed a private place to discuss what was going on, there was always a place to sit. Um, and that was just a very nice kind of small touch that was added um, just to make the whole experience feel a lot more homey. But beyond that, just knowing that there was somebody down the hall who was caring about me, thinking about me, and wanted to make sure that I was always feeling my best made my dorm actually feel like a home. Um, and that was such a huge difference as I started to approach my transition to college. Definitely. Uh, and I really appreciate your perspective on that. Um, I like, I might be hammering this point uh, too much, but people have this perception of RAs as people who are like there to make sure that you're not breaking rules. And that is, that is a big part of, of being an RA. It is, um, you know, when there are quiet hours, there, there are quiet hours and we are uh, enforcing that so that other people have safe spaces uh, to study um, and, and other, uh, just to make sure that the building is a safe environment and that everybody's staying safe. Um, but the much, much, much bigger part of the RA job is being a resource. Uh, and that takes so many different forms in, you know, the administrative and technical side of handling roommate disagreements. Um, so having like a neutral third party, just sit down and help you work it out because it's hard living with somebody else, especially if you have a random roommate, actually it might even be harder to live with somebody that is your friend. Um, and then to have to have that conversation of, look, I don't think we're very compatible living together because I like to go, bed, go to bed at 10 PM and you like to come home at 2 AM. And that actually brings me nicely into my next point about how RA serve as resources that we are students just like you. We're going through it just like you. Um, I'm personally on a three-year academic track, so I've gotten pretty good at you know juggling a uh, complex schedule, planning ahead, and having contingency plans. So I like to be that kind of resource for my residents too. They want to know what types of courses they should take. Even if you're an engineer, like I, most of my friends are engineers and I can speak pretty well to what EA one, two, three, and four looks like, even though I've never taken them myself. I'm in an acapella group. So I have theater friends um, who can talk or who talk to me very frequently and openly and joyously about what they're doing. So I can speak pretty knowledgeably about that as well. And that's what a lot of RAs are. They're well-connected and deeply involved on campus. Um, and you don't only have to go to your own RA for things. Um, I will frequently refer my residents who have questions to other RAs or to others of my friends. Um, so if I can't answer the question myself or offer guidance um, and help keep you from making the mistakes that I made um, and you know, handing off pieces of advice that I picked up along the way, I have plenty of people who could answer the question better than me that I am happy to be that kind of resource for in, in terms of pointing people in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, just thinking like putting myself back into the new student perspective, there's a ton of nerves that come with, you know, getting ready to come to campus. Um, you know, especially thinking about living in a new place where you're going to live. Um, it may be your first time living with another person in close proximity like that. Um, but it's, so nice to know that no matter where you're living, whatever, you know, residence hall you're living in, um, whichever area you're in, your RA is just there to help you find and access all of the different resources that are available, both within the university, but also within residential services specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely great points that you're making. Uh, and that I'm, again, really glad that you recognize. And I think that touches really nicely on why I chose to become an RA myself, uh, because I wanted to be that kind of resource. And I wanted to be, well, everybody remembers their freshman year RA. That's, that's something that, that everybody who went to college uh, comes out and remembers what their 
freshman year RA was like, whether that was a positive or a negative experience, obviously I want to create a positive experience. Um, but I became an RA to kind of challenge that perception of the RA as like, you know, kind of like a parent in the hall and more just somebody that you can knock on their door and be like, look, I've never showered in a communal bathroom before. Where do I get shower shoes? Do I need a shower caddy? Uh, what on these college packing lists is absolutely necessary? What are they omitting? What aren't they telling us about dining hall food? Uh, all, all of that sort of thing. Like I, I want to be there to be that honest friend who you knock on the door. It's like propped open. You crack it open. Hey, Liliana, um, should I take Orgo? No, obviously <laughs> not. Um, and it's, it's creating community and opportunities and memories with that community that you happen to share a space with um, that makes my job worth it every day. That's so uplifting to hear. And it's exciting to know that we have RAs like you on campus, um, especially because your RA is probably one of the first faces you really see and get to know once you get to campus, you know, on move-in day and all of the days following. Um, and it's really great to be able to actually build those meaningful connections with them, um, especially because the transition to college isn't always, you know, a smooth ride. And so having those resources and knowing there's somebody there um, somebody who is there to laugh with you, there to cry with you, and there to see you through it all um, makes the whole experience so much more worth it. Thank you, Liliana, for joining us today and sharing all of your wonderful wisdom and insights. And of course, as always, go cats. Go cats. <laughs> <laughs>